Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. The Father of heaven and earth wants to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He wants to bring us to that place where we are truly repentant, truly change our mind about the way that we've been living. To be bare before Him whom we are already bare before. You know, every time I think of every time I I'm, I'm think of a word, I think of a scripture. The scripture comes to my mind as I say it. <laughs> and I see how we are already bare before God. It's not like you have to get undressed, but he wants you to cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. He wants you to, to let him bear the weight that he knows how to bear and stop bearing the weight of the world for yourself and the weight of the world for you might be what's going on in your house and what's going on in the world whatever it is that you carry you're not meant to carry that this world belongs to God and he's called all men to account. He's called all of us to come after him. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would have would not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord he sent his son into the world. Jesus in John chapter what is it? In well, let's say in John it says I didn't come into the world to condemn the world that's verse, uh, yeah, jab, John chapter 3, verse 17. I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but through me, that I'm putting in my own words, through him, that the world be saved. That if they come to him, they will be saved. He didn't come to condemn them. Or should I say us? But to save us, to deliver us. The whole world. So we don't have to carry the weight of the world. Jesus has already bore the sin of the whole world. What we deserved is the punishment Jesus took. I, I wonder though if we even understand that the salvation, the way we think we understand it, the way we think we know it. Because Jesus comes and takes a punishment for sin. And yet we ourselves, do we truly understand what sin is? Or that it is our fault? Do we take responsibility? Do we? It seems that this soul, this mind, will, and emotions gets away with a heck of a lot. It can watch whatever it wants to watch can eat whatever it wants to eat, it can go wherever it wants to go, you know, wherever it wants to go. I didn't say where somebody else wants to go because we always jump ahead and think about what somebody else is doing rather than thinking about what we allow and don't allow. We are responsible for the soul that we have and whom our soul serves. We are responsible to take our soul and make it subject to God. That's our mind, our will, and our emotions. The way that we think. See, we want the mind of Christ, but to, in order to have the mind of Christ, come with me to Isaiah chapter 55. This is what it says in, in verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And then it goes into how the rain comes down. And that, that rain is the word of God coming down. And it's that word 
in as much as the word of, as we take in, it goes back up out of our mouth into the heavens, creating such a do. We're talking about a spiritual. We're talking spiritual stuff here, creating such a do on those clouds of heaven that that word starts to rain down. But we are captive by the thoughts of our mind, by the situations and circumstances in, in our life, because we have not understood the true, the truth of, of our soul's salvation, and how we work it out with fear and trembling. The true soul salvation, Jesus has given us, is, is, is the knowing of God, is the trusting God, and is the letting God, letting Him be the Father that He wants to be, that He is. It's like when you go to the store and you pull your money out or your credit card out and you purchase something, it belongs to you. When you buy it, it belongs to you doesn't belong to the manufacturer anymore it belongs to you God created the world and all that there is in it and every soul on this planet belongs to God and he has the power to cast those souls into hell he, he opens the door and says come on come on to me all you who are labored and heavy heavy burdened and heavy laden I will give you rest rest for your soul it's a choice to serve the living God. It's a choice to sit down. And when I say serve, I don't mean doing the work of a minister. Because you can't do the work until you sit down with the one who shows you what the work is. Until you see the one. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6. You can even go to John. You can, you can even go back to the Gospels and see that. Chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood a seraphim, and each one had six wings, to, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly there was something awesome that he saw and one cried unto another saying holy 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 is the Lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory I believe that each one of us has a time where we are we I mean there is there is an awe of God where there is an awe A-W-E of God, an appointed time when we are in His presence, each one of us. You might not have had the experience that I've had, you know, and others have had ex the experiences that they've had, but to have no experience at all in this area. God has an appointed time that He will reveal Himself to you and you will know Him. Not by word only. Not by hearing it from your grandmother and trusting on their, on their faith. But you have an appointment yourself to sit before the living God and know Him in an intimate way. Listen, he's, he's, he, he sees this. He says, One cry to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. The posts of the door were moved at, his voice, at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of them, one flew, one of the seraphim flew on to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, thine iniquity is taken away, thy sin is purged. 
also I heard the Lord, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Here, here am I. Send me. But I do believe it. I believe that there is a time appointed for each person, every person who's saved. You say, well, that's a lot of people. God's a lot of God. God, God is a lot of God. <laughs> I have another favorite psalm. It's Psalm 73. No, is it Psalm 73? It's 84, I believe. Psalm 84 says, and I'm looking for it real quick. Yeah, verse okay, it, 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 Verse 7 says, They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. O Lord of Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer and give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness, for the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk up rightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in Thee. There is a time appointed for each person to be in the Lord's presence. And you, when you when you know Him, when He's touched you, and you've known Him, I mean, you got to seek the Lord with all your heart. You got to look for Him with all your heart. When you look for Him with all your heart. You will find him. That is written in here too. You will find him. That's that appointed time for you. I mean, because the soul, the soul, the mind, will, and emotions has to be brought into sub to subjection. So to turn your face to the wall and desire to know God and not be moved by the world. It's a good thing. He will make himself known to those who really want him. I don't want to live in the thoughts of my mind anymore, controlled by the winds and the waves of this world, by the doctrine of man. But I want to live under the, the control of the, the power of the Spirit of God. I want to live under the power of the Spirit of God, leading me and guiding me in all truth. If you read your word and you seek God, you know that this is true. He is the God who is, uh, what is his name? The God of heaven. God of heaven. Elohim Bashimian. God in heaven. He rules. He rules. Day and night he's a ruler. We have to come out of the world and into his presence. Did you see in, in, in Psalm 84 how in verse 11 it says, For God, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Didn't it say the same thing over here in, in Psalm 34? The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none that trust in him shall be desolate. I wonder why he keeps on telling us that he's going to deliver us and give us something good. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. You know, think, he says things like, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our God, for, uh, for our heart shall rejoice in him because he hath trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. God's got good things in mind for his people and yet we have to enter into a rest that he has made for us. The understanding that he is that sun and that shield. He is our provider. He is our El Shaddai. He is Elohim God, Elohim Bashimian, the God of heaven. He's the one who releases the dew. But you're the one who sat with him who understood him as his your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That when trouble came, 
you were listening for his still small voice. And as you listened to, for his still small voice, you said what you heard him say. And that word went up into the clouds of heaven. The Lord heard you and he stored it up. And now it's pouring down like rain. You are his creation. And all things were all things because you're God you were you are God's creation and all things are created by him and for him and you give it gives him pleasure to bless you. It gives him pleasure to restore broken relationships. It gives him pleasure to heal you. Do you know what he gets when you do that? When you, when you do these things? When, when he does this for you, do you know what he gets out of it? You, you get the benefits, but he gets your praise. He gets your praise. Praise the Lord. He gets your praise and he loves your praise. Psalm 70, 73. Verse 23, let's start there. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. You have holden me, you have helped me by my right hand. You have hold, help, you've held my right hand, held me by my right hand. You shall guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? This is, this is our hearts with God. This is our hearts with him. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is our heart. Desiring Him. This is our eyes knowing. Desiring Him. You know, even if, if somebody we know is in harm's way, we want to pray for them. We want to intercede on their behalf. And yet we can't do it with worried prayers. See, the Lord has to be our delight. He has to be our soul salvation. You know, He's the one who quickens and makes alive. He's the one who establishes us and, and our goings. And He is that, when I say establish our goings, He's the one who orders our steps. He orders our thoughts. He speaks to us good things. And we say what we hear our Father say. We, hear, we say what we hear the Spirit of the Lord say. And look, look in, in doing it this way, Jesus Christ is lifted. He is exalted in us, before us. We give Him the praise and we give Him the glory. We're thanking the Lord the whole entire time. When we receive the word of the Lord, when we submit our heart and our mind to Him this way, that in this sweet, sweet relationship, we, oh Lord, help me, Lord. in this sweet, sweet relationship with the Lord, we understand Him like this. Whom have I in heaven but Thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is the desire for him. And then he takes this, he takes this desire for him and he works all things out together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. It says, verse 27, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have, I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Because when I do this, when I turn my face to the wall, he gives me the word, a, a, a word. He gives me provision. 
He gives me a word for the situation and I can pray for those, for others. I can pray for my sons and my daughters. I can pray for, for friends and I can pray for the church. I can pray for whatever needs to be prayed for because I've surrendered my soul to God. I'm not praying worry prayers for the situations and circumstances of this life. I'm trusting in the one true almighty God who is the God of my life. When I talked about, you know, just Psalm 73 there in, in verse 23 and stuff. He must be our all in all. And that those, those two verses right there. Who have I in heaven but thee and there is none beside thee. This is the love affair you have in your mouth with him. This is the love you have in your heart for him. When you go down to Romans chapter 7 and you, and you see, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You see yourself in the pages of this book. You understand that the only one who is mighty to save is Jesus Christ because he paid the price for your soul salvation. He has redeemed you from the curse of the law. We have to understand that God is in control. He controls all things, and yet mankind has been given a choice to choose today who he serve. You want, you just want God to just stop the sin and stop the trouble. But God wants you to become clean. He wants you to understand that though trouble is going to happen, I already told you that it would. To trust me, I'm not going to make trouble go away. Trouble is going to be in this world because so many people need to come to Jesus Christ. But we who are His were supposed to be salt and light in the earth, washing it and being washing ourselves and helping to encourage and wash others. We are supposed to be a salt and light in the earth today so that people can taste that saltiness and they can see that light and desire God. As long as Satan is loose in the earth, there's going to be darkness is going to be trouble but there is a time when it comes to an end there's a time when it comes to the end but we're not supposed to be fearful and troubled by what's going on in the world but be what we are in Christ and we are that by sitting down with the one who created us and knowing him learning learning what love is we can't take the love that we had when we were in the world and say, I love God. We can only take the love that He gives us and learn of His nature. Learn God's love. Learn how He does the thing. You know how short we put up with people and how long He puts up with us? God's love isn't short. It's long. God's love is patient. God's love is kind. But it's, it's the kindness that knows how to... Uh, it's a kindness that is firm, not a kindness that is wishy-washy, but a kindness that is firm. It doesn't just give in and buckle to people's feelings and whatever they think. It's a kindness that really, it brings people into the presence of the, the Lord. It makes them accountable for how they're thinking. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And yet at the same time that, the, that he's convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, it first falls in the house of the Lord. It first falls right here in you. You know, and even, uh, you know, even as I'm telling you this, I've got an image going on in my mind of a situation that I've just walked through. It's not up to us to judge another person's character. We know people according to their fruit. Yes, we do. But the same thing that they're walking through in temptations and trials, in, you know, in, in, in temptations and in trials, we see that. We understand that. So therefore, we don't belittle or berate people. We learn to hear by the Spirit, and we learn what God's love is. And when we learn what God's love is, 
we can love other people with that same love and that same patience that's in that love of God. There's patience in the love of God. Here is the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to go to Galatians 5 and 22. I don't know if there's anything quick about this, but we're going to go to Galatians 5 and 22. <laughs> and it says that the fruit of the Spirit, now this is the fruit we're talking about in people's lives. That you try, you know, you can't dismiss this fruit. But though you see people act out of character, you know, look, look at this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And without such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and, and lusts the flesh, the mind, will, and emotions, that the feelings, so oh, feelings. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. God will lead us and He will guide us in all truth. This says in verse 6 of Galatians, no, no, chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. What was the law of Christ? Isn't it love? Patience. You got to have patience with others, eh? I just really feel the need to stand there on that one because maybe, you know, not, not any maybe, but I saw myself and how I responded to a situation and I didn't like how I responded. And yet at the same time, I saw God's goodness and His grace the very next day in that. And the result is good. This is about our soul salvation. How to work it out so that the light of Christ can shine, can be in us and shine in us and, and do what it does in these last days. Because Jesus is coming soon and we can't be spotted with the world. We must become unspotted from the world. We must wash our clothes, our, our spiritual clothes in the, in our, well, our soul in the Word of God. And this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the Word in Your Face International. I pray that you're able to hear what I'm saying. I hear a lot of sputters and stops and <laughs> being here and there. But this is truly about washing out our mind, will, and emotions and making ourselves ready for the return of Jesus Christ. It's breaking up the ground of the hardened heart, getting us out of the soul man and into the spiritual man, getting him to have the control, letting our spirit man have control and not our flesh. You see, we spend such a short time with God in the day, a short time. I mean, we do prayer and then we get up and go, you know, we get out there and take care of our job. We do such a short time with Him. That we have, and we have such a long day ahead of us, we are confounded by the end of the day. So that's why. That that's why the breaking up of every thought we have. That's why the breaking up of every thought we have to the obedience of Jesus Christ. The devil can come in on any whim. And we don't even know how to fight. We don't, we, we don't, I mean, though we talk about the armor, we don't really know what the armor is. You know, we're looking for something that we can put on us physically to be that armor. We're taking the word and we're putting it in front of us, but then we forget what we look like. Because the armor is really the knowledge of who God is. And then God tells us who we are. And then we have, and then look. As I see that, I also see that appointment with God. Psalm 84. We read Psalm 84. But I see that appointment that every one of us has with the living God. And we it is revealed to us. God is revealed to us. You know, and 
and we are revealed to us. And then you go to Isaiah chapter 6 and you read 1 through, I forgot, 1 through something. And it, but it comes to, you know, who, who, he says, I heard a voice say, who shall go for us? And he says, send me. I'll go, send me. We come to that point right there. Because we know our God. We, we've had our, uh, our intimacy with him and now we're able to go out there and effectively address the situations and circumstances that God has put in our sphere. In our wherever He would send you today, wherever it is that you would go today, God has ordered your steps because you surrendered yourself to His for His use. He knows that you love Him. He can trust you. That you're not going to run off the other way. Um, again, this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. Be at peace. And thank Him today for His goodness, for His grace, for His mercy. He is an awesome God. And we can trust Him. Forget about your troubles. And cast all of, I don't mean just forget Him. I mean cast all of your care before the Lord. And ask Him to help you to leave it there. That's what I've asked him for. I asked him to help me leave it there. Don't let me pick up the trouble. Because it seems like it just comes right back and tries to attack you again. I say attack you. Because that's not me that wants that thought. If I sat it down with Jesus Christ, then that thought is sat over there with him. He will supply all of my need through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That means that he will take care of my son. Who, you know, who's in the Marines. He'll take care of him. You know, he'll make sure that he keeps angels around him, keeps him safe, and, and takes his, you know, orders all of his steps. He'll give him skill in learning and understanding. You know, he'll make him quick. He'll protect the troops all around him in the name of Jesus Christ. I can say the blood of Jesus. I can say salvation for, for all my family members, you know. There's so many things that God wants to give us. He's got good things in mind for us. But we must seek His peace and pursue it. And we must know. we got to sit down and know what that is. I, I must say a lot of that a lot. We must know. <laughs> we must do this and we must do that. It's probably from uh, dealing with children all day long. But we have to know what peace really is and we have to know what love really is and the only way that we truly know God's 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 character is what he gives what comes with the fruit of the spirit that comes from him is by the spirit of God he's the one who reveals it to you who births it into you you know he's the one that helps you to get all the junk out of your life He's the one who helps you pull all of... But I'm thinking about Galatians again, chapter 5, and how he takes all the that yucky thinking out of us so that we would not be promiscuous. I use that to cover the whole lot of the the fruit of the... the um, what is it called? The fruit of the flesh. <laughs> you got the fruit of the spirit, right? You got... Why do they call it the fruit of the spirit? What do they call it? Oh, the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. So that you could not do the things that you would. But if you were led by the spirit, you will not be under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery and fornication and uncleanness and like lasciviousness. And I say that to say this. That all of these things here, they start with a thought. And this, these are the thoughts, the, the, the thoughts that trigger these responses in our flesh. It must be brought into captivity by the Spirit of God. And that's Romans. We mortify the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God. 
we learn not to walk after the flesh by the Spirit of God. That means that we come before Him and we seek Him while He may be found and we call upon Him while He is near. We desire to cast every thought to the old, cast every care before the Lord. We desire to, to have all the good that God is talking about so that His character, not just, yes, that His character can live in our hearts and so we can walk His life out that He gave us, but so that sinful nature is not having any dominancy in our life. And all this sinful nature starts with a thought. That's how it started in the beginning. Before they even, dis before they ate the fruit from the tree in the garden, there was a thought that triggered that process. And it wasn't just that the devil said something to them. They looked at that tree before. They had thoughts in their mind about it. Then comes the devil to say, did he really say that? Believe God. He wants to destroy the works of the devil. He wants it, you to understand how to un destroy the works of the devil in your life. And that is by submitting to God. You submit to God, you'll be able to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He is faithful to do what he has promised when we submit ourselves to him. He will make us to mount up with wings like eagles to run and not be weary to walk and not be faint. The Lord our God is faithful to deliver us. But are we faithful to come to Him? Are we faithful to sit down with Him every day? As many a times as a day as you could pour out your heart before Him and let Him be your God. So much to say. But I must close now and say, you know, to God be the glory. I pray that He He reveal His self to you, that He that as you draw nigh to Him, that He would really reveal Himself to you so that you're anchored to Him and not able to get out. That you desire Him with all of your heart because you have tasted and seen the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts, in the name of Jesus Christ. There's an appointment for each of us. I don't know, maybe I've had mine. I, I've, I've seen him. I, I know that he's hugged me. I know that I've seen him. I, I've known that I've known the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that he's with me. So I'm working on casting all of my care before him and leaving it all there. Not picking up anything, no matter how dear this person is to me. God will save them. He will deliver them when I trust Him. Not that they don't have any power themselves to call upon the name of the Lord, but I'm not sure I don't want to be a hindrance to their faith. So I move myself out of the way and love on God and let Him love on me so that I can say what my Father in Heaven is saying, just as Jesus did it. I want to do it too. Well, uh, bless His name. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. Have a great day. Bye-bye.